TJ Dillashaw defeated Corey Sandhagen via split decision in his return to the Octagon back in July. And now, according to the former champ who was recently a guest on the MMA Hour, the UFC has told him that he will be next in line for the bantamweight title shot regardless of who is holding the belt. From what I've been told, I'm fighting for the belt next, no matter what that belt is. So that's kind of where my mindset's at right now. But sh it's Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo to me is an all time legend. So it's hard to think about not taking that fight if it's offered to you. But I'm fighting for the belt next is what I've been told. Jan Blahowitz knocked out Corey Anderson last February at UFC Rio Rancho in a title eliminator for John Jones's title. Following that fight, Jones gave up his belt and Blahowitz ended up fighting Dominic Reyes for the vacant title and won the belt with a TKO victory. Anderson, meanwhile, left the UFC to sign with Bellator and joined the promotion's 205-pound division. So far, Anderson has gone 3-0 in Bellator and he is now one win away from winning the Bellator light heavyweight title and $1 million for winning the Grand Prix. After his recent win over Ryan Bader, Anderson claimed he is the best 205er in the world. Blahowitz wasn't happy with these comments from Corey and slammed his former rival on Twitter. Hold up, so a guy who bolted from the USC after I slept him and almost made him retire got a couple of wins in the second league and claims he is the best? Maybe I've punched him too hard, no class in win or defeat Corey, there's levels to this. Corey responded with, Let's not forget, what happened to you the first time I left you looking like Elephant Man and you posted, I need to go home and rethink my career. Yeah, I got knocked out in our second fight, lucky punch, but I made you my broad for 15 minutes straight, nothing lucky about that. He must have forgot. Marvin Vittori suffered a unanimous decision loss to Israel Adesanya at UFC 263 on June 12th. Speaking to ESPN's Brett Okamoto, Vittori reflected on the loss and said he doesn't think Adesanya was in control of their title fight, although he thinks he gave the illusion of being in control. Here's the clip. How do you feel about that title fight now? Now that you've had some time to reflect on it and to, I don't know if you watched it again, like how, how, do, you, how do you feel about it? Uh, you know, I, I learned a lot, and um, I learned uh, I learned that like you know, he he wasn't any better. He was smarter, which I mean, it's you know, it's part of the better in a sense. So you know, he was smarter, and uh, and he fought a really smart fight. Um, you know, I did I did I did definitely a few mistakes that uh, that uh, that I know that I did, and uh, I've been working on it. And uh, you know, at the end of the day. I always look to things to get better. Um, mentally, he was uh, he was able to be more cool and uh, give. I don't feel like he was that in control, but he gave that uh, he was he gave that uh, that feeling to the crowd, and he was able to involve the crowd a lot too. And do a bunch that actually uh, got the crowd um, thinking that he was in full control. Uh, which I don't think it was because he didn't have that many weapons that he could use against me, actually. And he was most of the time disengaged in any kind of fight. But um, but he, he did really fight. Uh, he, he did fight a really smart fight. Speaking on the recent episode of the Chael Sonnen Show, the American gangster explained why Masvidal vs. Edwards hasn't been booked after the incident between the two in 2019 and discussed who is the favorite in this matchup. Here's the clip. 
Just to remind you, George, just so you fully understand why they didn't fight after three piece in a soda. Imagine they had, that would have been massive. When two fighters fight in a place that they're not supposed to, that's very bad behavior, but it's very compelling. We, everybody stops and looks at that, wait, what happened here? But understand this, Dana can't make that fight. If he does, he now sends a message to the industry to go behave like a fool and just make sure that your buddy's got his iPhone handy to put it out and, and we'll give you a big fight. He can't do that. That's why Dana waited. He didn't want to reward this behavior. Who wins this fight and why? Leon really has some momentum on his side. Leon's last loss was five years, nine fights ago, and it was against the sitting world champion in Kamar Usman. I think that Masvidal on his best day is better, or at least is good enough. I think that the matchup stylistically, look, the only one that's ever got over on George Masvidal, aside from that right hand that he took from Kamara Usman, is somebody that can out-wrestle him. That's just not what Leon does. Being a British fighter, Leon also favors the stand-up, and we saw that in his uh, contest with uh, Nate Diaz. So I only uh, remind you, this is where Masvidal does his best work, but now that he is a star, now that he's got the money flowing in, now that he is a marquee guy and the second most bankable star in the sport, is he still training as hard? Is he still just as hungry? I don't know the answer to that question. If the answer is yes, George Masvidal very likely can pull an upset here. Absent of that, I think that you've got to favor Leon. I just think he's hungrier. He definitely would need it more at this point in his career. Following back-to-back -back unanimous decision victories over two top UFC featherweight contenders in Calvin Cater and Jeremy Stevens, ongoing health issues and a dispute with the promotion have unfortunately put Zabit's career on hold. According to his manager Ali Abdelaziz, Magomed Sharapov may be on his way back to the octagon after an absence of almost two years. In a recent interview with TSN's Aaron Bronstetter, Ali Abdelaziz provided an update on Zabit's return to the UFC. Here's what he said. Tell me what the latest is with Zabit. Listen, he got booked up four times with your ear. Uh, your ear never, chose never show up. He got cut from the UFC before he didn't want to fight the ear. Um, one of this fight, we offered the cater, we took it, we beat up cater. And after that, you know, it's just Zabit, you know, He's just in it to be a champion, and I think he wasn't getting the opportunity. He was frustrated, and um, he decided to take time off. When he's ready, I'm going to call Sean Shelby, and I'm going to tell him he's ready, and I'll make sure, uh, and I'm sure Sean Shelby will give him number one contender match because he's on a crazy fight winning streak. He's up there, uh, and I think if he come back, he'll fight one fight, and after that, fight for the title. Mark Henry recently posted on Instagram that Zabit was coming back. How ready is he? Is he is he training right now, or is, does he still having injuries he needs to heal? He's 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 always in the gym. He's always training, but he never he never told me he said Ali, I'm retired. Right? He still is an Osada. He's still training. He's still doing everything right. But for now, uh, he haven't told me anything uh, about coming back. And I'm gonna leave it this way. When he is ready, he's gonna let me know. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel to keep up with the latest MMA news.